$5 million a day. Uh, good morning. It's uh, Wednesday, June 17th. It's uh, 8.40 a.m. Um, we had an unusual situation this morning that uh, two board members are not able to, uh, to attend. And so instead of calling this a regular board meeting, we're going to call this a special meeting. And we'll do business as, as appropriate to what we're able to do, but there'll be no action items. But we can handle presentations and other type of things that, uh, so we can move from there and then we'll have another board meeting to do the action items as soon as possible. So, um, so we'll call that meeting in order. Uh, Mr. Davis, any letters? Of key? Oh, wait a minute, before we start, I, I was down in, in Florida and the guy said to me, he said, you know, I, I heard you're from Ogdensburg. And I said, yes, I am. And I said, well, he said, I want you to have this. And I said, well, I have just the gentleman who would appreciate to have this. And this is a hat from the port of Ogdensburg. And I thought, well, there's only one fisherman and one guy here that would really <laughs> understand it's not you, Wade. <laughs> 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 it's not you, David, they died, but Mr. Morrow, I, I don't know how old that hat is, but it definitely has <laughs> tra traveled times whatever. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, <laughs> oh, it's a sand from the beach. Oh, sand from the beach. <laughs> sand from the beach. Uh, whatever. So, Mr. Morrow, I don't know. Oh, or probably. <laughs> so, I, do you know the history of a hat like that, how old it could be? Do not. I have never, I've never seen, seen anything like, like it. I've never seen Late it. Late 80s. Huh? Late 80s. Late, late 80s. 80s. Okay. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> made in the USA. All right. <laughs> I'll be back with that. Yeah, yeah, that was the USA. USA. <laughs> that's great. Well, yeah, that's why it's in good condition. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, enjoy whatever. I thought that was kind of hey, unique. That's great. This morning, I said, well, look at that sand that came out of it. Look at that. Look at that. With all the people, you better get that out of there. Maybe that's old dandruff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think it's sand. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. are we? Oh, yeah. so, I got it over here, too. So I don't, as long as it's not dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or sand fleas. Or sand fleas. Oh, they're moving. No, no, no. So, anyways, uh, I, I thought we'd do it at least do something interesting this morning. Fish wants to um, get this camel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That will be the last that have to be seen, eh? <laughs> uh, do you want any other communication for us or to uh, discuss? Or? Uh, well, just a couple things I'd like to point out. Um, the, for letters and communications the board, there's a couple of various things in there for news articles. Um, preliminary state response uh, from the Office of General Services regarding uh, designation as a salt depot. Uh, letters to the editor in support of the Bridge and Port Authority's efforts letters from the your news articles from the senator opposing those efforts, um, neutral editorial from the uh, Watertown Times, uh, positive uh, note from our federal officials, all three supporting on the same day the uh, airport expansion project and uh, promoting authority uh, interests. So a lot of good communications in there this month. The approval of the board minutes. I actually can't do that. Um, we'll get all those other for next time. Comments uh, presentation. I don't see anybody from the media here. Um, I guess we need to take a few presentations. Well, I think the first thing we should start off with uh, would be Kosky and Company audit presentation. And uh, at this point, I'd like you to introduce yourself if you would, and I mean, we'll go from there. Perfect. Uh, my name is David Stra. I'm a director with Tasking Company and have been for oh, about eight years or thereabouts. And uh, we had the pleasure of doing the Ivansburg Bridge Authority border station uh, audits for the last uh, several years. Thanks. And uh, uh, every year, for the last couple, I've had the opportunity to come out and visit with you uh, one day early in the month of June, uh, which happens to be today this year. And uh, it's always always a pleasant trip up here, and it's always beautiful weather, by the way, uh, notwithstanding the uh, uh, June that we've had so far. Okay. Um, Will we do a report in January next year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would suggest November, but then you have to come to Buffalo where we get eight feet of snow right around there. So, um, uh, but uh, 
you have a number of reports that we have uh, prepared and provided uh, uh, to you through uh, uh, brethren staff, um, and I want to take you through them. There are some very minor cosmetic items because they are in draft. Uh, and when we get to those items that are uh, slightly different in the final draft, I will point those out to you. I apologize for doing this. Is there a way to interrupt you where we can make copies so that way the board can have the copies in front of them? Oh. Or do you have copies? I did not bring copies. Okay. I, We're, we'll uh, have copies made. Karen so went to make copies just now. Okay. And that way everybody's looking at the same thing. Not would that problem. be acceptable? That would be fine. Okay. In that case, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, uh, uh, I mean, we have one of two choices. I can deal with a, uh, a little bit of the narrative piece and keep away from the numbers, or if you'd like, you can pick to a different agenda item, and then we can go back to this once she has the copies present. Why don't we pick another agenda item? Uh, sure. Kill five minutes while the copier is making the copies, and we'll come right back, and that way we don't interrupt your flow. Do I go back and recollect my cards now, or do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> you have to walk back. He has a routine, right? and you don't want to break it. Does that work for the committee members? That's yeah, fine. Pick another agenda. Whatever. Sure. Okay. Um, let me go into the uh, uh, break call uh, conference discussion. We had a great meeting at uh, break call. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've done at Break Bulk is we've finally gotten by the low level and mid level people in the organization. Uh, we're seeing the door and we're seeing the decision makers that have the key to those doors. Um, and that's very important, uh, particularly with three um, of the largest shipping companies on the Great Lakes, we now have direct access. And that comes through a combination of not only our work, but leveraging our connection with our board partner as well. And I'll give you, I'll give you a brief example. Um, there was a company that, uh, because we're on camera, I won't name the company, but uh, uh, <coughs> bottom line, we've been trying to get a hold of this company for a long time. And I got a hold of their European guy, and uh, finally uh, got a chance to talk to one of the head guys that makes the decision. Well, he was busy with another customer with a cultural difference. The gentleman threw up his hand and said, you know, essentially I don't have time to deal with, uh, deal with the port of Oxford in this case. So um, about four hours go by, and we're at the uh, QSL booth, <coughs> and we're talking with the QSL, and it comes down to, well, there's somebody we'd really like you to meet. Well, turns out that meeting was with the head guy that had uh, blown us off. He had our information, so our information had gotten to him through the, uh, through, through the mid-level guy at the booth. Um, but the leverage of our partnership and our contacts there is what facilitated that higher level meeting. And it's interesting because that is, that meeting and the one that followed it has got a real live uh, project quote for the fourth quarter of this year. That's something that we haven't handled in many, many years here. So I, I think it was interesting. That's how I would characterize the difference in break bulk this time with our new port partnerships and our leveraging. And the port business is a little different in general because they deal with who they know, they deal with who they trust. And we've been there enough now. They know us, they recognize us. And uh, I think even more importantly, they trust our port partner, um, which, again, there's no, in, there's never any guarantees. It's not like we're going to leave any one of these conferences with a signed agreement. Uh, we know that. And they take many years to develop. And I think good things are coming our way based on the meetings that we have. Sam, did you have any? Well, I, I think there's a lot to be said of uh, recognition, networking, personalities, um, and what you have to offer. And some people don't know what you have to offer. I mean, John, you've been all these things. You understand all the things we're talking about. You know the same. And it's, you know, being recognized, you know, who you are and what you can do. And I think uh, sometimes along the line you need an agent, and call a QSL or agent, to, to, uh, to get you to the next step. You know, and it's it, their their relationship with other customers are very helpful in that market. And I think when we walked away was uh, there's happy talk and there's real talk. And you know, the happy talk is hi, how are you? That's really nice. Hand the cars, these types of things, whatever. But then when you see 
the real situation happened right in front of your eyes, and I'm just talking, you know, with you know, people, and all of a sudden, you know, and, and making that type of connection agreement and seeing who you are and what you represent, I think that was a big part of that whole whole system there. And I think recognition of who you are makes a difference in being consistent of being there. I guess that's part of marketing is consistently being there or whatever. So I was impressed. I was impressed. You know, and, uh, and we'll just see how we go from there. Any questions on the, the thanks, Sam? Any questions on mm -hmm. break bulk? Um, the other thing, uh, immediately after break bulk, um, we went out to Jumpstart uh, that was in Seattle. Uh, what we're doing there is we're trying to find um, a second or a third airline to come in and use Ogdensburg Airport. <coughs> One of the things that we learned on that, uh, on that particular meeting was that, um, again, Ogdensburg is on the map. A lot of folks who knew who we were uh, when we talked to them. We are also in their thought process now. Uh, we met with about uh, five major airlines while we were out there, and there is opportunity for future discussion. And one of the things that became crystal clear um, in that meeting is the need for an airport-specific strategic plan. Because once we get this runway built, once we get the Allegiant service started in and out of there, um, there's a unique opportunity for us to grow the airport, but we need to figure out how to do that. And to do that, we need the strategic plan. So one of the re recommendations I'm going to bring forth um, at budget time this year is uh, we'll put a pl see about putting a place in there, in there to get that strategic plan done. Because our timing is absolutely perfect uh, right now to be able to uh, capitalize on future growth. But to get the airline here, um, I was kind of amazed. It takes a little longer than what I thought. Uh, there were some examples given where it was <coughs> takes airports eight years to line up routes, uh, individual routes. But the good news is, I don't think it'll take us that long now with 1.2 million Canadians 45 minutes off the road and the viable uh, uh, model that works at northern uh, border airports here. So I think we'll, we'll be in decent shape there. So well, you know, well, it's, it's, it's interesting because there's two different processes. The, Break bulk because there's boots, whatever, and it's all informal discussions going back and forth. And I call it the hoopla of the Las Vegas, I don't say Las Vegas, but all the lights and bells and whistles and, you know, the salesmanship of the boots and what's there, whatever. And then the jump start is just the opposite. The, the thing is, they're there for meetings. And and everything is well, very well coordinated of, of 20 minutes of, of time that you have. And there's a computer right on the wall, and it tells you the time, and it tells you, whoop, your time is up, and the next group is coming in, whatever. So uh, the strategy is for us was we were coordinated to have certain groups, and then our next strategy was where can I where can I find a gap? And if somebody gets up early, and somebody got up early, somebody was at five minutes, and somebody was five minutes late, I took their ten minutes. And so Wade had all the presentation stuff, whatever. And, you know, we got in there to talk with everybody. Everybody. The only person we really didn't need to talk to was U.S. Air, which is Watertown. And so we just been that interesting. And if you got my letter, you remember what I said was, what we were looking for was information. And you know, let them know that we're there, they know we're there, and we know exactly what the next step in process procedures wants to be. So everybody knows what's going on. We're all interested, and what are they waiting for? Build it. Build it. And they'll test the market. Uh, very appreciative to Allegiant. Uh, you know, very thankful for them for what they do, because they're, they're the ones that are supporting this project to start it off. Uh, they are just absolutely amazed. And new people come on board, and you know, they, they said, you know, I can't believe that Augensburg is doing this. The small town can do this that fast with the effort they're putting into it. They're just absolutely amazed at what energy is here. And they're just excited for this market. They're excited. What else was there on other people was, and they realized that Augsburg is the last American or Canadian airport of value. This is the last one on the border. So I know you stop to think about it. You've got Montreal, you've got Toronto, and you've got Ottawa, and Vancouver, and Seattle. I mean, those are, those are your big ones. I mean, there's stuff up in 
Minnesota, no other place or whatever. But this is this is the last stop. This is the last stop for that communication or whatever. So excitement there, excitement there. We have to continue both both places. You have to continue this, by the way. You can't just stop and say, we went once or twice. You gotta know this is in this is in your, your cycle of what you're gonna do with this. <coughs> so that's that's the important element we wanna be. So they're all there waiting for us. I also have one thing. Uh, we got a much better feeling uh, with the company we're looking to do business with as well, uh, because we dealt with airports that had their service uh, starting, you know, less than a year ago. Two airports that have had service with them for 15 years. So we've got a real good, got a real good understanding of the, uh, the company that we'll be dealing with during the airport expansion. Plus, make some other interesting contacts. There. Um, any questions on the jump start? Okay. Um, well, hearing none, and I see we've got the first copy here, so let's. Uh, uh, this one's a border station. Oh, uh, the other okay. one's Common Bridge. Why don't, why don't we do these other reports? And I'm right. going to bring the others in just a minute. Do you want to walk us through the financials? Yeah. Bridge traffic. Yeah. So, uh, for financials, there isn't any because this is the financials. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the bridge traffic, um, see we were down 14% on autos, uh, down 5% on trucks, uh, down 13% overall. It's troubling, uh, uh, especially the trucks, I think. We've, we've got the money going into the advertising program and we're down uh, 5%. Um, and, and the autos are, are down uh, more than we had budgeted. We had budgeted to be down, but not, but not to that degree. I think if you look over in the far right column, that was a very strong year, the year that ended uh, in March of 14. And uh, last year, it was just beginning to go down, and now uh, we're getting the full ball down from the weak Canadian dollar. But, uh, it, it, is, uh, it, is, it is. We will uh, also, just as a quick uh, programming note here, we will email you that file so you have it directly. Because it's not exactly clear when we look at it on the board. So I apologize. Fred, is that consistent with the other bridges? I mean, are they all? I haven't got, well, I just got that report from um, the organization that sent it out, and I didn't get a chance. Oh, sir. Fred, is there any chance? Just looking at, first of all, just looking at the audit process. Yeah. And when I went back over last year, I thought it was around. 13 to 15 percent overall drop, and I know in our budget this year we've only like four, and four and a half. Could you just do a, a, a scenario for us, say, if if this continues at the 13 to 14 percent decrease through the rest of the year, what that's going to mean to us? Yes, please. We'll do. And and my other question, can I ask John this? Dan, uh, and I had this question I wanted to ask you about uh, on your report was uh, uh, the McClellan group, and I, I see now that our trucks are starting to go down. And you, what what are we doing with them right now? We brought that to their attention. <coughs> their plan's been approved. Uh, they're working on it, and I have a two o'clock meeting with them today. To okay. Yeah. So you have further information for us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we'll move. Uh, if there are no more other questions on the bridge, we'll move to the airport report. Um, the passengers were down 110, they were down 14.8% overall. I believe that April was affected by weather. I don't believe uh, May was. Um, it's just not as strong as it was a year ago. That number last year of 1,000 was was the high, and uh, I, I don't know. I don't have an explanation for why that's that. It's uh, stronger than it was a few years ago, but still down from last year. Fuel sales were good. Um, we're up 11 percent for uh, for the two months. What's that attributed to, Fred? Um. I'm, I'm not certain what it's what attributed to. I know there was a lot of planes in there for, mm -hmm. for the college's graduations, but they yeah. should have been the year before. Yeah. yeah so uh, 
Are we pretty competitive price-wise? Yeah, price-wise we are. We are, and uh, I watch that closely. Um, in fact, we're, we're very competitive. I think there's only one airport that has a lower price and not full That's market. Right. Keep yeah. a close eye on that now, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the credit card activity report. Uh, we have over $10,000 for the first time uh, since we started uh, accepting credit cards at the toll booth. Uh, again, some of that is uh, uh, rent, some of the big ones, and that's giving the percentage down 3.5% for the month. So continues to be uh, you know, a plus for us. So I must bring in the uh, the other uh, report, the one for the report authority. Several things. Is there any questions on the building and occupancy report? No. Again, this will be updated to reflect the. Uh, the Fred, I, I guess the, the, when you look at the numbers as they as they're moving, and you start to say, what what can I predict? What can I predict? Are you assuming that as we move forward, we need to adjust some of our numbers in our budget and where we want to go from here to for the next year? Um, well, you can't. You can't. A budget's a budget. You know, once it's approved, right. it's approved. But I think, as Doug asked, I think we have to watch it closely to see how it affects where we're heading and compare where we thought we were heading. Because I personally, I don't think we should wait till the end and yeah. then go scrambling again. I Let's. Agree. And we're going to, as you just said, and, and as Fred said, yes, we've adopted the budget, but that doesn't mean we have to spend what's in that budget. Either. Sure, yeah. And if we have to make, yeah. we have to make certain concessions as mm -hmm. things are, are getting tough for us. I think that's what we have to do. Well, that comes down to the forecasting effort. We'll start that. We'll start right. that effort. One thing that you haven't seen yet, because the way our system works is, you can't start closing months until you close the year. I mean, most systems. You close the year, you make uh, uh, audit entries. Our system doesn't do that. So I can't close April, I can't close May until uh, we close in March. And uh, I think I think we've got some good things going on. We've got good things at the port. We've got a ship in already. Uh, so the reports you saw were negative. I think there's some positives out there. and. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to be able to next month report where we are at the end of the first quarter uh, financially. Um, that was that was one of the things that really got us last year was the lack of salt, and uh, we've got to ship in already. Well, that was one of my other questions on the, on the, the reports. I, I noticed the ship in, and, and I noticed where John and John went to a salt meeting. Mm -hmm. What's what's the status of that? You know, are, are we back in the hunt? Do you know, or, or what's it's pending the outcome of the state bids. So, we, I mean, we had a good meeting with them. They're interested in using us, the company that we met with, same company as last year. Uh, so, the present lease is expired, and uh, we're just waiting for the state bids to come in and get negotiated. There's more information I can fill in there, too, but uh, I prefer to do that in exactly the okay. because we're not the only ones that watch the state. <laughs> Thank you. Can I just have one thing with Karen? Yeah. Uh, the, who, who was responsible for the toll collector schedule before before she took it over? Patty. Patty. Yes. Now I see we do a lot of cross training. Okay. So. 
can try to. Well, I see it on your reports every yes. month. They yes. Need it. yes. And I'm just looking at, I mean, that's, it, it's important, but I think there's other important things that she could be doing besides the scheduling thing. And I didn't know within your cross training, if somebody else could do that or what have you. I just, it looks like everybody's got a lot in their plate, but at the same time, I'm looking at her and I'm saying to me, I'd rather see her doing some some work on something else instead of a schedule. Part yeah. of the issue with that is that scheduling needs to be a management function, and it isn't something that we can transition to CS. We couldn't have CSEA scheduling CSEA employees, so that's got to remain with management. So it's, our options are somewhat limited. Well, I just, I, as I look at it, and I'm a proponent of cross training, I'm just looking at everything and saying, okay, if, if we're doing this now, can they be doing this or can they be doing that? You know, just, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Just all I, I guess to finish up this, uh, this whole category, then, uh, Mr. Chairman, I recommend we deal with events and activities and then switch over to the other Upcoming board meeting schedule will still work okay for everybody. This is what we talked about. Yeah. The ninth, uh, that's on a Thursday, right? Uh, yeah. I believe. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mine too. Oh, I said it's not my head. Wednesday's my god. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, I got it. Now the truth comes out. Oh, 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 the truth comes out. So at, at this point, now that we've got the copies in front of us here, um, we'll stop the song in dance and we'll turn it over to uh, Dave Sparrow of Tosca and Company. Good morning. I don't have to hand over my business cards. We've already crossed that step, so we can go ahead and kind of cover it to the chase here, I guess. Uh, you have in front of you two packages, both stamped draft. And they are stamped draft for a, a very specific reason. That's because there are going to be some very modest changes to them, as we, I discussed with Fred and Wade earlier, um, based on some uh, very recent developments. And uh, uh, I want to go through them both. And I'm going to go through the smallest one first, only because it's uh, it's a whole lot simpler and easier, and that would be the border station. Uh, it's simpler and easier because basically what you have is you have an entity, obviously as you all know, you have a primary asset, you have a primary tenant, and you have a primary piece of debt. And beyond that, uh, and a management fee that comes out of that. And that basically sums up the border station in a nutshell. Uh, the lease on that expires in about three years. The debt on that uh, uh, obligation expires in about three years. Um, and the, uh, the interesting piece about the, uh, um, uh, the border station uh, is uh, really presented on page number seven of that document. And uh, um, it's the statement of cash flows. And usually I refer to the statement of cash flows uh, only as an anecdotal or a, a secondary kind of a point. Uh, but the, the border station is the entity or an entity in the uh, uh, group of uh, uh, activities that the, uh, the Bridge and Port Authority manage. It actually, it, it's a, I don't want to call it a cash cow, but it does generate positive cash flow, significant cash flow, and that cash flow flows over and is paid to the bridge, and then the bridge uses it to fund its operations and to effectively, I'll use the word, subsidize the port. Um, so uh, this is a, a critical piece uh, in the equation because this actually does generate cash for you. Um, and that's clearly presented on page seven, which is why I like to go there. And if you take a look at it, uh, from operations, you're generating almost $730,000 worth of positive cash flow after you've paid your uh, uh, management fee and the interest on the debt. There's about $650,000 or $640,000 that's used to pay principal. And at the end of the day, um, the border station was $90,000 ahead of the game as far as the cash that it had in its bank account at the end of the year. That's after it had paid out $366,000 to the bridge. 
So it generated rough numbers, $450,000 of positive cash flow uh, uh, for the uh, organization as a whole. Um, that's really the punchline for the, uh, uh, the, and I could take you through all the numbers and quite frankly, uh, uh, I, I think that you would find that maybe to be interesting, possibly very boring, and it would be kind of time consuming, and I prefer not to uh, uh, generate that kind of time flow up. Uh, you could ask uh, uh, Fred and Karen and, and get uh, basically a very similar information, but that really is nuts and bolts what's going on at the border station. I want to take you to the uh, page that's the third page in that small document, which starts out with independent auditor's report. And I want to go ahead and talk about this here because this is going to lead me into the Bridge and Port Authority. Uh, these are our opinions, and at the end of the day, um, that is what you pay us for. Um, you don't pay us to come out here and fix your books. You don't pay us to go ahead and do a whole lot of other things. We pre prepare and receive financial information from Fred and the staff, and then you engage us to render an opinion on its fair presentation according to the county principles. Uh, their responsibility is to prepare it, our responsibility is to opine on it. And this document, cover to cover, as with the Bridge Port Authority, cover to cover, is all your information except for those very few pages that have our stationery on it. Okay, those are our opinions. Um, and our opinion is expressed at the very top of page two in the case of the uh, uh, border station. <coughs> so I'll declare a graph now that's clearly labeled opinion under our new clarity standards that were enacted about a year ago. And what it says is that in our opinion, these financial statements fairly present. That's the opinion that you want to see, and that is our opinion. Uh, I have seen other opinions and other statements, but not on yours. Okay. Uh, it's a fair presentation of the county principles. Uh, generally accepted the United States of America for governmental entities and uh, that's what you want to see. There's a couple of other paragraphs that are subsequent to that that talk about required supplementary information and other report, reporting requirements uh, and basically that's just uh, uh, again uh, our profession is in many respect, respects uh, uh, hampered by required to follow boilerplate and uh, uh, these are required disclosures that really don't, don't add a lot of significance other than the fact that, yes, we also opined on these issues uh, also that are presented. And we also had to issue another report that talks about your conformance with government auditing standards. Uh, that's important because uh, uh, government auditing standards cover uh, uh, internal, internal control over financial reporting and internal controls over compliance. Um, that's not a requirement that an entity that's governed by financial accounting standards board presentation has to comply with. Government, according, government accounting standards require that. And there's a separate report that talks about that, which is at the end of this document also. And it, too, says that uh, everything there is as it should be. Yeah, let me ask you a question in regards to government auditing standards, whatever. What agencies fall under those categories, like city government? Um, state, cities, counties, towns, villages, school districts, uh, the district, federal government, okay. uh, um, public libraries, um, uh, any kind of fire protection, dis fire districts, uh, any kind of a municipally formed corporation uh, that is not qualified as a uh, not-for-profit. Okay, if you're in the not-for-profit world, you follow FASB. If you're in the for-profit world, follow fast. If you are a government, which basically means publicly supported, uh, you're funded either through tax levies or you're given, uh, you're created as a, as a function of state legislation, which uh, all 200 and I forget how many there are at this point in time, uh, public authorities in the state of New York, of which you are one, um, those entities are also uh, uh, governed by government auditing standards. Uh, in your case, uh, your financial statements roll up into the state of New York because you're effectively an instrumentality that was created by the state of New York. Um, uh, the city of Ogdensburg uh, does not roll up to the state of New York. It doesn't roll up to the county. It's uh, a municipally incorporated entity back in 19, 18 or 17 something probably. 
um, and uh, uh, it follows government auditing standards. Those are promulgated uh, 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 by the FAE, which sets up the, uh, and the FAF, which set up uh, accounting standards. And then in, here in New York State, you have the New York State Office of the State Controller that issues uh, his accounting and auditing guide, guideline, accounting guidelines, I should say, for what Fred and Karen are supposed to conform to. Uh, the state created the Office of Management and Budget and, and the Paris filing requirements, which all the public authorities have to funnel their financial information into, uh, as opposed to uh, having to file with an income tax return with the Internal Revenue Service on an annual basis. Is your firm specialized in government? Uh, truly, this is our sweet spot. We specialize in government arena and not-for-profit. Um, we do a fair amount of housing. Um, but uh, quite frankly, government is our sweet spot. I would have to say that it probably constitutes anywhere from 40 to 55 percent of our total top line. Um, I'm not sure where the rest of the line have fallen, but uh, uh, I work on predominantly governments. Uh, I, I frankly, I celebrate <coughs> my chance to work on a good piece of commercial work, but that's that doesn't happen too often. But uh, governments and not for profits are, are what we do. Um, and that keeps us, uh, uh, puts us into a, there's a, uh, I had this discussion about uh, a week ago with uh, uh, a finance commissioner for a, a large city in New York State. And the uh, discussion centered around the selection of an audit, an audit firm that was, uh, uh, had done an audit for them. And it's a quality firm, and don't get me wrong, it's a quality firm. But they're tax accounts, okay? Uh, and uh, there were some things in there that were less than 100%, uh, some things that on the surface of the document kind of questioned. Uh, and uh, the question, the, the point of the, the discussion was, ultimately was that uh, while they're a fine firm, this is a sweet spot. And in the area where we were, there are about five or six, maybe four, that have local offices that are really, this is their, this is their sweet spot and uh, we are one of them. And frankly, we are not only in, in the Buffalo area, but we are, um, I'd have to say that probably about uh, at least 60% of our municipal-based client base, governments, are center of the state and east. We do a lot of work on the island, a lot of work in New York City, up and down the Hudson Valley, Albany, obviously. Um, if you're gonna be in government accounting or government auditing, got to be in Albany in New York State or else you're not in it. Um, and we are definitely in Albany on a real routine basis. I want to do the record here. Okay. Thank you. Maybe I'll make a record. Somebody's <laughs> <laughs> um, watching. <laughs> the, the other document that you have is the fat one. And uh, uh, ironically, the way it worked out, I'm going to take you to the very back of the package first because that's where the, the little reports happen to reside. And the, uh, the last page that you, last three pages that you have in that report are what's referred to as the report to the board. This is a required piece of communication that uh, our auditing standards dictate that uh, we need to communicate to boards of governance. And quite frankly, uh, um, it can't be underemphasized because while we work closely with, uh, in the case of the Ogdensburg Bridge and Port Authority, uh, Karen and Fred, we work with other people like Karen and Fred with different names, and all of the other clients that we service. But we work for you. We don't work for Karen and Fred. And it's important that we go ahead and, and have these opportunities to meet with those boards of governance because we are the interpreters and the uh, uh, report card graders, I guess for lack of a better way of phrasing it, for your financial staff uh, to evaluate them in your eyes to see that the information that they are providing, because again, these are the financial statements are the representations of management, uh, to see if they in fact present fairly. And uh, uh, in this case, they do. And it's important that uh, not only A, that we convey that to you personally, but it's also very critically important that B, you have the opportunity to um, openly discuss any questions that you have directly with us. So you all have my business card and we can discuss that right here, or else you can go ahead and give me a call, send me an email, 
it's not a problem. You can go ahead and address those issues or any questions that you may actually have. Okay. Um, without further ado, we have the report to the board. Um, and what this does, this conveys what the profession deems to be critical issues that uh, you should be cognizant of what the financial statements are and what they are not. Um, I happen to really like the very first one because it talks about accounting estimates. It's about the bottom half of that first page. Everybody has the impression that financial statements are finitely accurate. And boy, that is so far from the truth, it's not even funny. The, uh, they are anything but finitely accurate. They are latent with estimates. Uh, in your case, you've got a $50 million asset that's about maybe a quarter of a mile from us, and it's being depreciated over some useful life. I can't tell you if that's good, bad, or indifferent, but that's an estimate. And over that period of time, that asset's going to go ahead and be written down to ultimately zero. And during the course of time, it will either go ahead and be ahead or below the curve. So that's just an estimate. <coughs> you also have your other post-employment benefit obligation, which again also is an, an estimate. Uh, how much are you ultimately going to wind up paying out in the form of retirement health care benefits to your employees that work for you right now that are entitled to them? It's, it's based on all kinds of assumptions. Increases in health insurance costs, rates of inflation, uh, mortality tables, um, and uh, uh, the likelihood that an employee will continue to work and with you until the point in time when they actually do retire and are entitled to those benefits. All of which are variables. All of which are fed into your actuaries and they go ahead and they uh, stick it in a black box, come up with a number, and they, we stick that portion of that number on your balance sheet and on your income statement every single year. So there are some real important, and, and typically, those are big estimates, okay? You could have allowances from collectible accounts and stuff of that nature, and you do have a little bit of that, but by, by virtue of just the sheer dollars, they pale by comparison to these. Um, do we encounter any difficulties during the course of the audit? The answer is really no. Uh, typical stuff which is not difficult. Uh, we ask for things, things come our way, we go back and we ask for more information. That's the way it works. Uh, we did have to make, make uh, uh, there are, there's a section here referred to as corrected and uncorrected misstatements. In the course of the audit, we came across a couple of things that we wanted to adjust. We reviewed those with Fred and Karen and the adjustments were made so that the financial statements were present fairly. Um, we mentioned here only because they were, uh, they are what the profession deems to be material, uh, were they misleading without it? Uh, someone could draw the conclusion, but they're in our basically we consider those to be more along the lines of almost housekeeping. Okay, they're not extraordinary type items. Uh, disagreements with management. Uh, in all the years that I presented these reports, uh, I've only had one where I actually went ahead and had a comment in here, and it was not with regard to the, the bridge authority. Um, this would be a dispute or a disagreement over a financial statement presentation item, and uh, there are none. Uh, management representations. This is a, a real critical piece, and, and uh, you got to get your head around a little bit because uh, Fred and Karen uh, and, and many of you are here on a routine basis, daily basis, some of you. Uh, we come in maybe for a week. Uh, we ask for a bunch of information, and then you ask us the question, Does our, do our financial statements fairly present? And we have this little window with which to go ahead and base our opinion. Um, and as a result of that fact that we're only here for that little bit of time, we have to rely upon a lot of people to give us information. We have to rely upon the accuracy and the veracity of that information. So what we do is, at the end of the day, we ask for what's referred to as a management representation letter, and this is standard procedure for any accounting firm that you're going to encounter. Uh, and it basically says that you gave us all these records, uh, they were all the real thing, uh, you told us about any kind of information that you received from your uh, oversight of entities that you have to report to, uh, so that we have, during the course of that window, enough information to render our opinion. And uh, uh, that was sent to Fred uh, yesterday in an email, he's going to date it, he's going to sign it, he's going to send it back to us, and then we can release our financial statements, or your financial statements, I should say. Um, management's consultations with other independent accountants. Uh, uh, we're not aware of any. If you want a second opinion on any issues, um, there were really no any other audit findings or issues to bring to your attention. Uh, and on the very last page, page three, it talks about other matters. 
this is a, a little bit significant, although not uh, outrageously so. Um, this really references some of the other information that's presented with your financial statements. And in your case, in 2014, there was a little bit of a change, and that change is the fact that you received uh, uh, $3.9 million, if my memory serves me right, uh, in the form of a, a federal financial assistance for the FAA grant to do the renovations at the airport that have already been a topic of discussion. And with any federal funds, there is that are in excess of $300,000, or half a million dollars, I should say. Um, there's currently a single audit requirement, and you didn't have one last year. This year you do, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, but that brings <coughs> us to the end of this report to the board. Um, and I suppose I should say, if you do have questions or comments, you can just you can just interrupt me and uh, ask me a question, because uh, quite frankly, uh, this is really a prime opportunity that you have for that. Um, immediately in front of that report to the board is a two-page document, and it is not labeled, just has a half date, because that date will be the date of Fred's representation letter. And again, these are at the very back of your big package. Uh, this is what's referred to as a management letter, not the management representation letter, but a management letter. And this is where we make commentary uh, with regard to <coughs> improvements that uh, uh, we would like to see addressed. And, one of the items here for the current year is uh, related party transactions. Uh, uh, there are intercompany accounts be because you do have, uh, I believe, four funds within the port. You have the border station, you have the bridge, uh, and as a result, there is uh, a flow of funds back and forth. And uh, uh, as with many entities in government that have these do tos and do froms, uh, they're sometimes a little bit hard to manage. And uh, we'd like to see. Uh, bit of emphasis put onto those things to manage them a little bit better to make sure that they in fact always are, are, are the same numbers uh, so that uh, uh, those interim financial statements that you Fred will be able to prepare once his books are closed for 2015 uh, that those financial statements as you receive them are in fact accurate on, on the go and then without further ado we get to the real bulk of the document which is the bridge and port authority and I'm not going to take you through this document page by page. Uh, uh, I know I would probably fall asleep a bit. I'm sure that you would too. Um, the immediate pages after the table of contents are the same document that we referred to before, the independent auditor's report. It's effectively the only pages that are contained in here that are ours. Everything else in here cover to cover is your representations. Uh, like the border station on page, top of page two, it has our opinion. And the opinion is the same as it was in the border station, which is what's referred to as an unmodified opinion. It used to be clean, and it says basically that the finance statements present fairly. Uh, it also talks about the required supplementary information at the very bottom there, under that paragraph that talks about other information. That's referencing your single audit, um, and that is different than what you had in previous years because of the presence of the, finance, the federal funds. Page three, again, is just, again, some more boilerplate kind of information that we're required to stick in here that talks about your, uh, the comparative nature of the financial statements. Last year, that information is summarized. So technically, in the professional standards, it's not fully comparative. So we have to put that paragraph in. And then we talk about the report on government auditing standards. Again, the same as we did in the border, in the border station. And then with the public authority nature of the, uh, the bridge and the port, you also have to issue that investment report uh, for Paris because there are special requirements for that. Um, I'm not going to take you through management's discussion and analysis because, frankly, um, that is something that you can read, and, and a lot of that relates to the um, financial background, the projects that are underway, uh, where the authority is going, and what you have going on. Um, and my purpose here is really to address numbers. On page 10, we get to the balance sheet, and there's a couple of uh, pieces here that I do want to bring to your attention, one of which is this. Uh, if you take a look at the balance sheet, you can see that the is $349,000. <coughs> That's effectively all border station money. Border station had $351,000, um, if memory serves me right. So effectively, the bridge itself 
The only cash that it has is the border station cash because the border station is actually rolled into the bridge here for presentation purposes. The border station is what's referred to as a blended component unit of the bridge. So it effectively gets rolled into here and then any duplication, the intercompany activity is eliminated. But that $350,000 is really border station cash. And uh, I'm going to talk about cash a little bit as I go through this because I think cash, where it came from, where it went to is, is a critical piece that uh, uh, Fred can take you through the numbers anytime. Uh, the cash is, is of critical interest to me. Um, if we look at page 12, um, that's your statement of revenue uh, and expenses. And one of the items on here is something that Fred had already discussed, but he discussed in the context of where you're going in 2015-16. If you take a look at the two far right-hand columns, you've got 2014 and 2015 year ends there. And you can see the bridge tolls in this presentation, you're down roughly 4.5% from 2014 to 2015. And I do not re recall the exact composition of the traffic flow difference because I actually, uh, when I reviewed this, I actually took a, a hard look at the analyticals. But my recollection is similar to what you were saying for 2015-16, uh, and that is that the, uh, uh, the drop off in the passenger car traffic was higher than the drop off in the truck traffic. And I'm presuming that the truck, because of the difference in the revenue, uh, the toll situation, the trucks actually generated a pretty significant piece of the revenue stream. When you take a look going down here, and again, I'm going to focus on the far right hand two columns because they basically tell the story of what's different from this year to last year. You're down a few hundred thousand dollars in bridge tolls, and you're also down pretty significantly in port operating fees. I believe that was with regard to the uh, the uh, salt. Pardon me? The salt. Salt. Okay. Um, and you can see overall, they brought you about a half a million bucks between 2014 and 2015. Correspondingly, you had some drop-offs in your expense stream, which you were very happy to probably see, no doubt. You're down about fifty thousand, about sixty thousand dollars in your uh, salaries and wages. Most of that came out of the bridge. You're down big bucks in payroll taxes and benefits, and that's almost split evenly, about $200,000 between both the bridge and the port, and the total drop of about $400,000. Your automotive expense dropped uh, quite a bit also, and that was mostly over on the port side, uh, 40000 of that. Then the other item that dropped a lot was the equipment repairs and maintenance, and again, that was almost extensively in the, uh, the port side of the world. And again, I'm assuming that a lot of it had to do with the drop-off of the revenue stream associated with the salt drop-off. Okay. Um, on page three, I'm sorry, page 13. Also the one there. That thing for an account to do, I guess. <laughs> the very top item there talks about what I mentioned already, the federal and state grant. You got $3.9 million in the port fund. That's basically all federal. Uh, I think it's 3.8 was the... Uh, uh, FAA grant is another $130,000 or thereabouts that's related to uh, uh, the pass-through grant. I can't remember what it was referred to. Uh, but that's almost 100% of that uh, $3.9 million is the FAA grant. Outside of that, this year and last year, you can see there's a huge swing in that position about from 1.1 down to 1.7 up. That's about a $3 million swing. It's all your grant. And the reason why it shows up the way that it does is because that $3.8 million grant was used to buy a capital asset. So there's no expense on this statement that's associated with that. But on the very next page, which again gets me back to the cash flow statement, you can see it. <coughs> and right smack dab in the middle of the page, it talks about capital expenditures. In the port fund, you're up $5.5 million in capital assets this year. That's, that's, your, that's your runway, or your airport, I should say. And you can see the federal and state grant right below it. There's $3.9 million worth of, of grant money ostensibly used mostly to offset those capital expenditures. Okay? 
The other piece that is, is significant here, is <coughs> when you take a look at those two numbers, this is about a $1.6 million spread. And that money had to come from someplace. And if you look around the table, you'll see where it came from, okay? Uh, I'm excused from that one, by the way. Um, and if you look immediately above it, you'll see that there was $2.2 million that went from the bridge to the port. That's how they financed that piece that did not come from the federal and state funding. And of that $2.2 million that went over there, I had previously talked about the fact that the border station is part of the cash cow. It generated roughly $700,000 of your positive cash flow that put the bridge in the position of being able to put that money into the port to fund the, uh, the non-grant funded portion of the capital project. When we take a look at the very bottom, the third number up under the bridge fund, you're going to see you're down $1.5 million. $2.2 million of it went over to uh, uh, the port. So you actually did generate a positive cash flow from activities up at the top there, about $1.6 million. And with the exception of those couple numbers, these, this page looks like last year's page. That's where your changes are. That's what you did in 2014-15. It was different than what happened in 2013-14. I'm not going to scoot you through all the notes because, quite frankly, uh, uh, that's narrative. And, it, and I, I don't know about you, but I can't stand it when somebody reads to me. So I am not going to endure you, make you endure that. Uh, but there are two pages in here that I want to discuss because there are some changes to those pages. One of those pages is page 26. Wait a second while you get there. At the very top of that page, it talks about the authority maintains a line of credit, $5 million. That note is coming out. That uh, line of credit is, is no longer in place. Uh, the third line down, the third paragraph down, talks about on April, effective April 14, 2015, you put a different $5 million line of credit into place. But that top one is gone. Okay, so you don't have $11 million, you still got six. It's not five, one, one, it's just one and five. Okay? And the very, the next change is going to occur on pages 32 and 3. And I'll wait for a second while you get there. And this is the section that talks about uh, your contingencies. And basically, when we talk about that, we're talking about your exposure to litigation. And uh, since this document was drafted, um, there have been some modifications that are going to be required uh, to this. Uh, the very first item uh, was resolved uh, favorably, uh, as I understand, in the month of May. And that is going to be uh, one of the things, and I, I suppose I'm going to just back up for just a second here. Before I reference the fact that Fred is going to be providing us with a management representation letter, we are also going to circle the wagons one last time with the attorneys before this document is issued. Our standards require that we have those updates within two weeks of when we issue. And when we last spoke to the attorneys was more than two weeks ago. Uh, when we receive their revised updates, they will be addressing this matter, I expect, and it will be coming out in conformance with the language that they provide us with in those, in those letters. Okay. But this, doc, this uh, piece of litigation has been resolved favorably. Can I just interject one thing Certainly. real quick? Uh, the first uh, bullet point uh, under 14, that is St. Lawrence Factory Stores that you recognize. And the uh, first item on page uh, 33 uh, relates to Hoosier. Thank you for the introduction to the first item on page 33. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that. No, that's absolutely fine because that's the next item I was going to. Uh, that too is even more current events as I understand that actually occurred in the month of June. Is that no. correct? No, it occurred last summer. Oh, last but summer. They, but they okay. had got you the letter. Okay. Um, but that too will be coming out uh, uh, based on the attorney confirmation that we will be uh, reviewing when soon as it comes in. And both of those are significant positives because uh, uh, the financial world does not like to see uh, litigation as an exposure. Um, 
I'm not going to take you through too much of the rest of the, the financial statement schedules. I want to skip to <coughs> um, what is in your package, page number 44. Page number 44 is the what we refer to as the SEPA, which is the Schedule of Expenditures of Federal Financial Assistance. And you can see the $3.7 million FAA grant. I said 3.8 before, I was off by $100,000. Hope you'll excuse me. And on page 46 <coughs> is what's referred to as a summary. And this is a nice overall view of everything here, which for boards is kind of nice to have. It summarizes the financial statements, the reports on the federal awards, what federal award was audited, and the results of all those audits. And if you take a look at all those big X's, you'll see they're all marked off in the no column, which means there were no exceptions, there were no findings, uh, there's nothing to be reported. Uh, again, like this as you would like to see it. Um, and it also identifies the airport improvement program with the specific CFDA number uh, to the, uh, was the major program that was audited. That brings me to the end of my package, although your package has those two letters after it, which we started with, so I don't have to go through those again. So uh, uh, I suppose what I would want to do is say if there's any questions that you have, uh, I would be willing to address those and we can go forward from there. Well, one thing when I see your packet with the numbers and configurations and, and practices, whatever, I realize Fred, I guess I have a different respect for everybody who does all the counting and you, sir, that all the things and how the numbers line up and the practices and things that you do is, is very complicated, complex, and very analytical when you start looking at the numbers in the total way. When I went through it, the, the, and that's why, I, I, and I do this all the time, I, I very rarely do I, I have the same presentation. When I took a look at yours, what jumped off the, the financial statement to me was your cash flows and statements because with the capital activity, uh, the debt service that you have, the long-term lease or coming up to a short-term lease situation that you have with uh, uh, GSA, I believe it is, uh, uh, those are critical issues that are on, on your short-term horizon. Uh, your financing, and again, I don't know exactly what the ultimate capital expense is going to wind up being for the FAA grant or FAA uh, uh, project at the airport, but the uh, uh, the cash flow implications of that are, are significant. I mean, you're down a million and a half of your own money. Now, you've put the lines of credit into place that you got to have to uh, sustain that negative cash flow to meet your commitment to that project uh, because uh, uh, the, the border station is not generating that kind of cash flow, um, and, and uh, nor will it generate that kind of cash flow. So uh, uh, from your purpose, your perspective and your mission as far as managing your organization, that to me is, is where uh, I wanted to drive the points today because your operation looks like it did last year. Those are the big changes, and that's what you really need to wrap up. <coughs> if I could, Sam. Yes. Um, I think you summed it up when you said you don't work for Karen and I. <laughs> um, and we we uh, we find your organization to be challenging, which is good. And uh, um, and 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 it feel and it does feel like that. You know, it feels like you're taking a test. And I think uh, I think that speaks highly of uh, of the professional organization that you bring uh, here. Well, one of the things that, that happens in the process, and when Fred, and, how many years have you been here? Four, four, four years. years. And you start, you come in, whatever, and I say to you and Karen, I said, okay, two new people relatively think of an organization of this capacity, and you say, what have you learned in four years? And obviously, I imagine uh, you've learned a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, and got better with, with that learning process. I think that's a... You know, fair to say, uh, in regards to this process. But. You know, I want to spin back to a comment that the gentleman at the end of this side of the table made up front. We were referring to cross training uh, at the time, but uh, it is with regard to the toll collectors. Um, uh, 
in the near term, the cross train is going to become a critical issue because uh, uh, the lady on the other side of the table is with child. <laughs> so I suspect there will be some time of an absence coming up here shortly. And as I understand, there is another woman in, yes. in, in Fred's office, which is also uh, with child. Um, and six days apart, then. Pardon me? Or do six days apart. Days apart. <laughs> when, you know, so many, so many jokes come to mind. <laughs> um, you thought Fred had hair. He won't have any after that. <laughs> but the uh, um, but the emphasis on the cross training is critical because um, those are situations that, that that do come up. And uh, your comment just now leads right to that because a you need stability in that financial record keeping report production mode. And that's one of the things that we look to when we look at organizations, because uh, if it's created in chaos, the likelihood is, is that it's probably not a really quality product. Uh, you've got to have uh, a routine, some procedures. You've got to have uh, all the all the cylinders running at all the right time to make it work. And uh, uh, so you really do need to have some level of that. And that uh, administratively will be a, a challenge for Fred in the next uh, Quite frankly, the next year because uh, uh, you've got a, a, a period of time, and then you're going to have to have the period of absence. <coughs> yeah. David, I wanted to ask a question, and it really doesn't relate to anything more of a curiosity question than anything. What percentage of the, the folks that you deal with would have six years of clean unmodified audits in a row? Is that a common thing? Is that an uncommon thing? Um, I'm going to say probably in the high 70s, mid 80s. Once you get on a roll and get on the wagon, you usually don't fall off. If you're off the wagon, the, the, the reverse side of that question, if you're getting bad opinions, how many of those repeat? 70, 80% of them repeat. Okay. Uh, it, uh, uh, if, you, if you've got an issue in, in organizationally or whether it's structurally or whether it's uh, uh, programmatic or whether it's just uh, uh, you don't choose to implement it. Matter of fact, I'll pick one. Um, not a specific client per se, although I could put a number of clients to it, but uh, capital assets are problematic. Um, they require a huge amount of record keeping. Uh, they yield little beneficial result to cash flow. Uh, they do help you keep track of all of your uh, touchy-feely stuff that you actually have to, um, but they're an accountant's nightmare because they're typically these huge databases, and uh, in the case of the Bridge Authority, and you're not uncommon. Uh, uh, I believe you maintain yours on an Excel type of a format, a platform, uh, as quite frankly do many of our clients, okay? Uh, some do it very successfully, some do it very mediocrely, <laughs> if such a word exists. Um, but the uh, uh, the issue comes down to very simply, small files are easy to keep that way, big files become an absolute nightmare to maintain that way. And uh, I know we had some discussions with Fred during the course of this audit, um, and uh, that you know your, 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 your financial uh, capital assets, I mean you've got $115 million worth of assets between the bridge and the port authority and the border station. Uh, that's a lot of assets, and admittedly, uh, the biggest one is something that's sitting out here about a quarter mile away. Uh, there's a whole laundry list of other ones also, the pieces of equipment and machinery that are required to keep track of all that stuff. Uh, and it's in that detail that uh, it, it gets hard to keep it in an Excel format. So, I mean, there are software packages out there, you know, and they don't have to be expensive. I mean, uh, FAS is out there, and it's not tremendously expensive, FAS. Uh, may have changed names, but that's what it used to. Nuts and bolts package, pump the stuff in, it keeps track of it, does all the math. The problem you have with Excel yeah. is that uh, uh, you're responsible. The quality of the formulas are based on the quality of the input. And uh, where FOS, you give it the parameters, and it does all the math right. Now you've got the operator intervention piece in Excel. And you have the documentation piece that you don't have in Excel. Because uh, nobody documents their systems when they're in Excel. They just know how the spreadsheet works, where uh, a standardized software package has got an instruction manual that says, this is how you add them, this is how you delete them, this is how you maintain them, this is how you run your reports. With Excel, 
you've got to have that all buried between your ears and be able to execute it. That's that cross-training, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it, but a lot of times the fixed assets will be off and nobody wants to spend the time, effort, or energy or money to get them fixed. And bringing this back to where this whole discussion started with, uh, fixed assets can be a reason why you get a qualified opinion. And if you don't spend the time, effort, and energy to fix it, that same qualified opinion you had last year will be the same qualified opinion you're going to get next year. Because once you're there, you got to do something to get off of it. So Useful information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So our process is for us to review this. Well, uh, what I would suggest is uh, just for housekeeping matters, uh, there probably should be a motion by this committee to accept the report, and then we can do formal board okay. action accepting the okay. report next time. Okay. Almost on the list. I second. In favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Excellent. David, thank you. My pleasure. Look forward to seeing you next spring when it's hopefully weather's as nice again then. <laughs> Maybe a February meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. You can leave the snow in Buffalo and come back here the snow in Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. 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 y